Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you, this episode is brought to you by our patrons, like Ahaga Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Denton, Nestor Flores, Sodasan0424, and VideoGamer75. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it'll really help us out. Thanks for your support, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It is time, once again, for Enter the Dojo, my regular, I don't know, video essay analysis series, whatever you want to call it, on Schools and Legend of Five Rings, the RPG by Fantasy Flight Games. Now, those earlier RPGs, the new one. Not that against them, just I don't have all those books and stuff. Anyway, so we're here. I'm doing it, you know, more frequently than I said, like I said I would. Uh, when did the Hedo one actually come out? Not too long ago. Uh, this one's a little bit later than I was planning on it, but with uh, the recent E3 stuff, I was kind of busy over the, the weekend a lot. So, you know, and even into early the week, so I had to do some other stuff. Hey, you never know, that could be L5R related. I saw a uh, Lord of the Rings LCG game, digital version, uh, previewed at the indie sizzle reel on Microsoft, and you know, Cyberpunk 77's a classic. RPG, who the fuck knows? But yeah, so <clears throat> took me a little bit longer than I was originally planning on to get here, but still getting here with a more regular pace. Uh, and actually, that's right, it was Kaito was the last one I did, so that was very end of May, and then Hida was mid May. So that means if I want to be on, I should probably do another one of these in about two weeks. We'll see if I stick to that. Who knows? Maybe it'll be. Uh, well, this is two weeks, I'm recording this two weeks later than the last one came out, so I guess that is about on par. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But yes, so today, in case you can't tell from the intro slide, which has been hanging around for a while, and will hang around for a little bit longer, we're back in Enter the Dojo, and we're going to talk about the Shosuro Infiltrator, because I wanted to talk about a Shinobi school. And also, I, a very iconic Scorpion school. Like, really, if you, if you want to know what the Scorp thing is, Shosuro Infiltrator is one of the really good ones. Anyway, kind of similar to the Kaito one, I want to, before we get in there, I want to talk about two things, briefly. <clears throat> two concepts to the game that I want to go over, because they matter. Uh, and so, first off, I want to talk about roles and role tags, and specifically the Shinobi role. And then also I want to talk about Ninjutsu, because we're going to have to talk about that a lot. But first, Shinobi. So, I don't know, to me, the Shinobi tag on schools is kind of the most confusing. So, as far as I understand it, your role... You know, the role you list on your sheet and the, that, all that stuff. Your role or roles is basically a shorthand both in and out of game for what your character's supposed to be good at and what is expected of your character. You know? Like, the game has uh, tips and tricks, basically, for what your your duty, your giri should be with your lord based on your school's roles, those tags you have. And also, in general, kind of like what sort of jobs you're supposed to do as those tags. So, for instance, if you're a bushi... Both in and out of character, you know you're good at fighty stuff. If you're a courtier or an artisan, you're good at social stuff. And I think artisan is also used not necessarily for scholarly stuff, because that is explicitly a potential job for Shugenja, but more for technical stuff. You know, the kind of thing that needs a skilled hand that's not necessarily purely social, but isn't necessarily intrinsically intellectual. Like, for instance, the Kitsu Medic School is tagged artisan. I'm sure that's because they're expected to do, you know, first aid and possibly even field surgery to some extent. But they aren't really otherwise artisanal unless you need to roll design to roll bandages. You don't, by the way, at least not in my game. That would totally be a medicine check. I don't know what I don't know what necessarily the best ring for foresight is, but it would be one of those with that prep bandages. Probably Earth, I guess, because you're rolling them for something. Anyway, that's a completely different discussion. And then Shugenja and Monk tags are spiritual or supernatural stuff. There is a little bit of caveat in there when talking about monks from orders outside of the clans like Fortunist or Shinseist, and how they will have a slightly different role because they're not necessarily part of the clan social structure. But even though that's in the section on roles, I really think that's more to do with those schools and their social expectations than necessarily inherently being monks because at the moment 
there are more clan monk tagged schools than there are external order tagged monk schools. That's just how it turns out. And there will probably continue to be more depending on how things go. I shrugged there. That's why there was a pause. So, yeah, those are your kind of roles. Shinobi is weird. My best understanding is that Shinobi is the tag that says you are good at spy stuff and sneak stuff. But what that means really depends on the character it's attached to. So, for instance, if you're playing a Haruma school, you're a Bushi Shinobi. Uh, let me actually, since we're going to talk about Ninjutsu later, let me double check, because, hey, I'm not doing that school today, what uh, amount of Ninjutsu they get. So, yeah, they're Bushi Shinobi. Primary is Bushi, secondary is Shinobi. They get uh, access to Skulk. Deadly Sting, Noxious Cloud, and Silencing Stroke. Okay, so they get all four. Uh, they just don't start with any. And they don't necessarily get them in, a, in the appropriate ranks. They're basically ranked up. But uh, what you get out of that school is not necessarily, especially with their school ability, not necessarily what you do is you put on your, your pajamas and go out and assassinate people. That's not really how the, the crab operate. They don't really feel the need to secretly put a hit out on their human opponents. They will just, you know, get a giant army and slap your dick. Uh, or if you're uh, Hida Kasada in the original Clan Wars timeline, you'll get a Shadowlands army and utterly fail slapping and bruised dick. But that's a discussion for an entirely different time. So, why are they tagged as Shinobi and why do they have access to ninjutsu? Because the Haruma are notoriously shifty. While they won't necessarily use these tactics on humans, they will totally engage in stealth, sabotage, ambushes, traps against... Shadowlands creatures, and obviously because they've got Deadly Sting and Noxious Cloud, even Poison, you know? There is no tool that's too dirty to use on a darn dirty Jigoku-loving Shadowlands creature. Mm-hmm, I'll tell you what. God, I should play a really southern crab sometime, that'd be funny. Those are the only do American accents for fake Asian people. Don't use racist Asian accents, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, the Haruma will engage in certain sneaky tactics, and maybe if you are playing one, you could, as an individual, apply those to normal Sneaky Pants Shinobi stuff. But that's not necessarily what they're about. Meanwhile, over at the uh, the hilariously overtagged Soshi School, who is Shugenja Primary Courtier and Shinobi Secondary, or technically Courtier Secondary Shinobi Tertiary. Um, as far as I can tell, like, let's see, they get Skulk and Noxious Cloud and Deadly Sting. Okay, so they get all four also. Uh, but they get him in a weird order. So, yeah, as far as I can tell, the what the Shinobi tag on Soshi means is, hey, normally we expect you to go out and do Shigenja stuff or mostly social stuff, but very occasionally we will ask you to do shifty things with your invocations, and we also taught you how to take care of yourself. It's really weird, and honestly, like, I, especially if you're homebrewing, since we know we have new ninjutsu techniques coming up, if you wanted to swap out some of the stuff that Soshi's got for something more relevant, you totally probably could, because I don't really like... Not just Cloud, sure. Skulk, obviously. That's basic, but, like... I don't really think of Soshi as a school that's going to make much use of uh, Deadly Sting or Silencing Stroke. Those involve weapons. But they're trained to be a little bit shifty. However, when you scroll up one because I'm using a PDF, duh, to the Shosuro School, which is Primary Shinobi, Courtier Secondary, the Shinobi tag seems to substitute in for Bushi, because, uh, as we're going to discuss today, you are a hilariously good murder machine as a so Soshiro Infiltrator. I don't know if I accidentally said Soshi Infiltrator earlier. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, f flow, you know, flow states, other buzzwords. But yeah, so you get all, all of the... Uh, ninjutsu, and you get most of them quite early. I think the latest one is you get Silencing Stroke actually at rank 4, and it's a rank 4 technique. You start with Deadly Sting, you pick up Skulk at 1, which is appropriate, and you get Noxious Cloud at 2. So, uh, you have very good privileged access to those ninjutsus, including a starting one, so you can never fail to take Deadly Sting. And we'll discuss more about that in a second and all the other stuff. But, yeah, as far as I can tell, what they mean is, is as a Shosuro Infiltrator, you are primarily a Sneakman. Uh, you will either be in a cover identity, or you will just be inserted into a location as, Herba Derp, I'm an ordinary Scorpion Courtier. There's loads of us. All our schools are Courtiers. 
Uh, and then occasionally at night you will put on your Scorpion Clan pajamas and you will kill people really hard. So, Shinobi's weird. We're going to get a lot more Shinobi tanked schools in Courts of Stone. That's pretty clear. We're getting a Mercenary Ninja school, which will probably be a pure Shinobi. And it's basically Ronin Shinobi, effectively. Uh, the Kolat schools tagged pure Shinobi. They're kind of weird. Obviously, I understand why their school is tagged as pure Shinobi because they are literally all deep cover agents. You have the false enemy disadvantage. Shosuro, you don't have to be deep cover. You can be, and depending on your campaign, you might be, but you could also just be someone who was trained in the Shosuro arts, and for whatever reason, you're not you're not good enough, or you're too publicly well-known to f- go full-blown identity death, but you still are able to do, in you know, espionage shit. But yeah, espionage shit is super varied, and likely the techniques we're going to get to do that is more varied, but we'll talk about that. A different time, because uh, I'm sure there will be a Courts of Stone review. Uh, they have said that it's uh, people with pre-orders are getting shipping notices, and uh, I received word that the original note in the article about it coming out in, in quarter three was wrong. It's due for quarter two, so uh, probably within the next couple of weeks, I might skip doing a uh, a new Enter the Dojo if we don't have any good ideas right away to uh, do that review instead. But we'll see. It depends on when they release the PDF. <laughs> uh. But yeah, if you're if people you're one of those people who's concerned about well now the Shosuro will get all the ninjutsu techniques, I think that's okay. The appendix of the Scorpion Clan novella, which by the way, if you want to l- learn about Shinobi and ninjutsu, is a great uh, fluff primer along with some other Scorpion focused stuff. Uh, they basically say that uh, Shinobi dojos only really teach you the schools uh, or the tools that you specifically need in that specific uh, dojo style to get your job done. They don't teach you all the, the ninja tricks for free. Uh, there's even a sidebar about a uh, dojo leader went rogue, uh, killed the people who were sent to uh, take her out and fled, and her techniques were lost for generations. Like, you you want to be careful. You don't just hand everybody everything. So the core book ninjutsu skills should be considered common to a certain type of ninjutsu and certain shinobi roles, um, uh, mostly assassins, ambushers, and poisoners. If you need to backport more ninjutsu into your Shosuro, uh, there will almost assuredly be some manner of, uh, excuse me, uh, titles to do that sort of thing. And uh, I'm a huge fan of using the tools the game gives you, so slap titles on everybody if it makes sense. Backport some shit. We're going to talk about some titles later, actually. So, with that discussion of the Shinobi tag out of the way, and that only took ten minutes, uh, let's also very briefly, well, maybe not briefly, but... Listen, I'm self-aware. We're going to talk about the four ninjutsu techniques that are in core and what they do. So, because, as we said, the Shosuro gets all of them, so we'd have to talk about them anyway. And this is a good idea to kind of put these in perspective. There's four. There's one for each rank. Uh, So currently, if you roll stolen technique ninjutsu, you learned skulk. Cool. Uh, Speaking of skulk, let's start this. So this is the rank one technique. When you perform an initiative or attack check using air, you can spend opportunity as follows. And basically, if you are in obscuring terrain, a crowd, or otherwise concealed from sight, one character with uh, vigilance lower than or equal to your ranks and skill already loses sight of you. So you have to have some kind of narrative trigger to, to disappear from sight. You can't quite just vanish from perception, but it's a really good way to do some stuff. And... Uh, unfortunately, like, y- well, uh, there's a Wombo combo I want to talk about earlier that's that's a pretty funny if you can actually get to pull it off, and it really hinges on that Skulk activation. Anyway, let's move on to Deadly Sting, because you get this at start as a Shosuro Infiltrator. Uh, this is a poison-based technique, so basically as an attack action, you may use one dose of poison and make a TN3 martial arts air check using a readied concealable weapon targeting a character within the weapon's range. And because that's martial arts air, that means that it's melee or ranged. So ideally, you're going to want to use this on probably uh, Shuriken, but basically all the ninja-y type weapons are concealable. Let me let me run a gander what this works with. So you can do it with uh, butterfly swords. That's fun. You can do it with a... Kiseru, which is also very fun. You can do it with a knife, you can do it with a uh, Jite, you can do it with a Sai, you can do it with a Tessen, and a Tanfa. So most hand weapons, and most what they call special weapons. 
So, blowgun, ideal for this sort of thing. Kama, gusarigama, shuriken, even a mundane sling. So, yeah, you've uh, you got a lot of options, including even ranged stuff with that blowgun or throwing shuriken. And what this does is, if you succeed, you uh, apply the, the chosen poison to your weapon, and we'll talk about poisons too, I suppose. Uh, the target suffers physical damage equal to the deadliness of your weapon plus bonus successes, which, uh, BT dubs, is why this is actually okay on a blowgun, because the blowgun is like damage one, deadliness three. Uh, and then you have a couple opportunity spends. You can move one range band, and then you can make the target suffer a critical strike with severity two plus one for each opportunity spent. At rank three, you can access, well, at rank three or with privileged access, you can access Noxious Cloud as an attack action. Use two doses of a single poison and make a uh, TN2 medicine air check, targeting each other character at range 0 to 2. If you succeed, each target suffers three physical damage, ignoring their resistance. This damage counts as being uh, inflicted by a weapon envenomed with the poison you use. So basically, smoke bomb! And then uh, you have some new opportunities. You have the same air one from Deadly Sting. You can move a range band. So basically, scoot around out of, out of target. Uh, and then you can spend more uh, air plus until the end of this the scene. That should be air one because it's marked as a plus. That's a, obviously an editing error. Anyway, uh, until the end of the scene, the area at range 0 to 2 becomes obscuring and dangerous. And then if you've got two plus, one target per two opportunity spent suffers a critical strike with severity two. Uh, which I believe because of the, the poison thing means that that counts as the actual poison part. Otherwise, you're mostly just going to like... I don't know, blast their armor off a little bit. It's kind of funny. And then Silencing Stroke, the current capstone, rank 4. As an attack action, make a TN4 martial arts air check using a readied weapon, targeting one character within that weapon's range. If you succeed, the target suffers physical damage equal to your weapon's base damage and suffers the silence condition. So, you strike them, you punch them in the throat, and they can't speak. If you succeed, other characters beyond range 0 to 2 of the target do not notice that they have been struck for one round plus additional rounds equal to your bonus successes. So, you silence a guy so he can't cry out, uh, and anybody who's not standing, like, right next to him doesn't even notice he's been hit. And then there's an opportunity on this, um, air plus. If you succeed, the target suffers a critical strike with severity equal to the deadliness of your weapon, plus one per op spent this way beyond the first. So, that's a cheap crit. That's a one opportunity strike. Uh, which, by the way, actually, I think, uh, doles back to some of my wombo combos. But anyway, that's a, that's a different discussion. So those are your four techniques that you will be using. You can kind of see their themes. I guess we'll talk about poison really quick. I didn't want to necessarily want to make this intro section longer, but we should mention the ones. This will be brief, though. There's currently three poisons in the book. Poison vial, one vial. Keep in mind, these are forbidden, so you uh, lose a little bit of social status. Not, not status, but you lose social attributes if you get found with these. Uh, so noxious poison is the big one. And basically, if a character ingests Noxious Poison, they suffer critical, critical Strike 10, and then you can increase the severity by spending Opportunity on the check to dose them. If it's applied to a weapon, you increase that weapon's deadliness by 4. So that's important to note for those, those attacks which are like, increase your deadliness and, uh, and do a free Critical Strike. So Firebiter is a painful poison. Uh, if a character ingests it, they suffer 5 Strife and are dazed and exhausted. If it applies to a weapon... Uh, after they suffer a critical strike, they suffer dazed and exhausted. And then Night Milk is a uh, dizzying weapon. And so basically, if it's introduced to the character's blood stream, they suffer five fatigue and are disoriented and prone. They fall over. And uh, when it's applied to a weapon, if they suffer a critical strike, they become disoriented and prone. So obviously, um, Noxious Poison is the easiest because it's just f plus four deadliness. Um, that combos really well with the Shostro ability we're going to talk about later. So if you're buying poisons, I recommend Noxious Poison. But you never know when you may want to just, uh, you know, drop a guy. Like, uh, poison a very weak weapon that's not doesn't have a lot of deadliness, and then just make a guy become dazed and, and dazed and exhausted with Firebiter. Or um, literally make him fall over with Night Milk. All right, so that's our big intro section, talking about some basic mechanics we need to get out of the way. Let's go ahead and uh, actually get into this school. So now that we've rolled through our introductory segment and actually covered some basic stuff we need to know, let's, uh, let's get into the actual school. So, Jester Infiltrator School, tagged Shinobi and Courtier. 
The rings you get for this are air and fire, and hey, those are going to be your core rings a lot. Uh, air obviously is key to a lot of your ninjutsu stuff and a lot of your deception-y, a lot of your subtlety, a lot of your sneaking. Um, useful also for sending certain kinds of deception, you know, counter counterintelligence stuff. Uh, also, a decent pick in a fight for you, because you don't want to get hit. And fire obviously also makes a lot, because you're ostensibly your cover is, oh, I went to the acting school, or uh, a joke I heard in, on some some community sites is, uh, oh, I, I went to the, the Shosurobushi school, it's it's pretty obscure, you've probably never heard of it. Uh, but yeah, so those, those are your, your core rings for the school, you'll see that a lot. They're pretty effective at what you do, and uh, they're going to influence later choices and some stuff. So you get five skills, you get your full five, and... Your skill choices can be, you pick five from Courtesy, Fitness, Games, Martial Arts Melee, Martial Arts Unarmed, Performance, and Skill Duggery. Yes, you don't get any Martial Arts Ranged Core. Uh, we'll talk about later that later with uh, Curriculum, but yeah. Uh, recommendation? Well, if you're going to definitely focus on your ninja-iness, you want to take Melee. And you want to take Skull Duggery because that fuels your Skulk, which you're definitely going to take at Rank 1. And in general, is just a good skill for you to have some. Uh, if you can come out of this with, like, three skull duggery, that'd be great. So those are probably your two core. After that, really up to you. If you emphasize the, like, climbing on rooftops and, you know, swimming through moats and stuff, you want to take some fitness. Uh, performance is obviously usually how your cover goes, so I would recommend taking that. But you can also take courtesy and just double down on that and just be a, a polite, I am definitely a normal courtier. Never mind, I have a katana. Excuse me, sir. Good for stuff like that. And uh, games can also be a little bit flavorful, you know. Uh, let you in on some stuff. You know, and hey, you never know when you'll want to gather intelligence over a shogi table or a go set. Your honor's 30. You're a shinobi school member. You're pretty shitty at this honor thing. Your techniques available to you are kata, rituals, shuji, as normal. So for starting techniques, as discussed before, you get the deadly sting to start. That's a rank 2 ninjutsu you get at character creation. It's great. You don't get any poison to use it with, though, so spend some of your starting money if your GM will let you. And you get to choose one uh, of the following shuji, you know, for your court or your cover. You can choose uh, Whispers of Court or uh, Sensational Distraction. So uh, Whispers of Court is a rank 1, and basically uh, you can make a courtesy air check equal to the lowest vigilance, and you can create a rumor that spreads across the area. Um, and basically, uh, you anybody can spread a rumor as part of an intrigue, but Whispers of Court lets you do it fast and with sticking power, and lets you get in additional uh, effects. So that can be pretty useful if you're one of those talky types. However, uh, you can also pick Sensational Distraction, which is anytime you make a social skill fire check targeting one or more characters, you can spend opportunity uh, to make the targets treat their vigilance as one lower per opportunity spent this way when interacting with other characters, and when interacting with you, they spend it higher. Uh, you may or may not want this trade-off. It, it really depends on what you're doing. If you're more of a lone wolf sneakman, Sensational Distraction probably won't help you, but if you are trying to fit into a group and like have a group identity totally works for you. Uh, so you can pick either way. N neither necessarily has a direct impact on your school focus, but either will be useful just because, hey, you're also going to court your tag. You're going to expect to do some social stuff. We had this conversation. Uh, if I had to pick, I'd probably go with Whispers of Court, but you never know. So, the big money. Your school ability, the Path of Shadows. When performing an attack action against a target who is compromised, incapacitated, unconscious, or unaware of your presence... Treat the damage and deadliness of your weapon as being increased by your school rank. So, obviously, it's a school rank-based ability. It doesn't, it's like the Kakita one. You know, you want to go back way back to that episode. It doesn't start strong, but especially combined with poisons uh, and some of the other special effects, you can get, by the time you start getting to, like, rank 2 or 3, that's pretty noticeable. And, boy howdy, uh, that's a very broad list, including compromised, incapacitated, unconscious, or unaware. You know, it's a it's a it's a big deal, okay? I got some got some serious powerhouses. And then you got your starting outfit. You get common clothes, ceremonial clothes, traveling clothes, so you get a lot of clothes. Uh two of which are mundane. You get your dice shell, in this case it's um katana and wakizashi. If it's another type of sword, I will be sure to let you know. But normally for the sake of not cluttering up with too much text, I cut 
the description out. You get a knife, you get a Yumi, even though you don't get any range. You get any, you get a Quiver of Arrows, and you get a Traveling Pack. Pretty solid setup. Um, you can kind of see the different options here you have. You are a courtier also. Maybe you can choose to be a more social one, but your school ability and a lot of your focus, like your early access to Deadly Sting, the fact that you do have, you know, a couple of martial arts skills in there, Skullduggery, your fitness even, uh, you're secretly a combat character. That's that's kind of your MO, is I look like a perfectly normal Scorpion Courtier, uh, aka a Shifty Bastard, but also I'm a Shifty Bastard who knows how to hit you with a sword or a knife and uh, really ruin your whole goddamn day. That's Shosuro Infiltrator in a nutshell. So let's move on to their actual curriculum and techniques so we can uh, kind of talk more about this and their options. Alrighty, so once again, as usual on this slide, do not look at the left-hand side of your screen yet. I will know, and I will find you. Let's look at the curriculum. So uh, in rank one, we're going to ignore the top half entirely for a second. Let's go down to the bottom. You can get Skulk at this rank, and because you don't have access to Ninjutsu normally, you have to pick it up at this rank, you forget it forever. So always make sure to spend your EXP there. And then you can also get at early access to uh, Veiled Menace style, which is also pretty essential to your character build. Uh, in case you don't know, a quick refresher, what Veiled Menace does is when you're making a martial arts melee or an armed attack against an, uh, using a weapon in a one-handed grip, um... You can spend opportunity to you can spend only one opportunity to inflict a critical strike with severity equal to your weapon's deadliness, and then spend additional opportunity to uh, increase your crit. So uh, this is very useful in a lot of situations because it will expose your target to crits, which you enhance if they are unaware of you or if they're unconscious, incapacitated, compromised, etc. So. Uh, it's normally a rank 2 technique, but the crawl up to rank 2 can be pretty slow, depending on how much EXP you get. So, I, I would definitely take the opportunity to take it early. It's really going to help out and synergize with your character build. Um, and in fact, you know, talk about duelists. Um, if you can get away with it, if you can find a situation where you can actually activate Skulk, um, at rank 2, or if you get the Yojimbo title, you can take Iaijutsu Cuts. And you could try and wombo combo Veiled Menace with um, Iaijutsu, uh, because, let's see, I mean, technically, your GM has to have a certain amount of interpretation. Uh, you have to end, you end Iaijutsu with a weapon ready to one-handed grip, so obviously it has to have a one-handed grip, which Veiled Menace requires, if you're using one-handed stuff. Um, I would say that, you know, theoretically, you could... Uh, Iaijutsu into Veiled Menace if at first you used Skulk to drop out of their uh, range of sight, which means you could crit on a uh, Iaijutsu cut, which normally is hard to do. So, like, that to me is like, man, if you could ever find an, an opportunity to actually drop, drop Skulk in the initiative of a duel, then bid high. You literally teleport behind him and achieve your katana. It's great. But most of your GMs will probably not let you get away with that more than once or twice because of the harsh conditions on Skulk. But still, fun combo. Uh, we'll talk about the rank 1 kata you can take earlier, but you can see your skill spread here. This is going to kind of form a little bit of our offhand, though. Uh, if you look down, you get a, a little bit of variety in some of the extra skills you get. Like, uh, sentiment comes up a couple in your middle ranks. But you can pick a martial skill. Uh, if you want to try and use ranged stuff, I'd recommend, because obviously most in most cases you want to rank up, because you want to increase your, your ability. You know? Uh... You'll want it, you can choose to take ranged as one of your martial skills here, or as, as the martial skill group here. But if you're not going to bother with ranged stuff, then don't bother taking it. Take um, unarmed or melee instead. I might even prefer melee because there you get a cup, you get several martial skills groups, but your individual martial arts is split between unarmed and melee when they appear a couple times later. So you might want to emphasize that angle more. Um, you can access courtesy or performance, pretty standard skills for you. If you want to up your social ability, you can pick them off your curriculum to go fast. Uh, Skullduggery is here. You're going to want to take that, not just because it advances your curriculum, but also because it's pretty essential to you. So, you know, killing two birds with one stone, get your rank ups. At rank the second, you can access uh, trade skills. So you could take another rank of Skullduggery, or you could take survival, which could be useful to you if you need to gather components for poisons. Um, if you have a cover identity, taking something like labor or commerce might work. Uh, you know, skill groups are usually take whatever you want to take. Like, for instance, theoretically, 
if you were going to try and do some shenanigans with like a duel or something or some other situation, you could take like tactics or uh, meditation on, on your martial skill, and you might want to to boost initiative, but you can pick them up any time. And you know, depending on how strict your GM is, you probably don't need an initiative check to do some of the stuff you do when you just kill people from sh from stealth. From shadows, yes. Sorry, I had to take a drink. So that's up there. You get a rank of fitness. That can help out your wiggling around and maneuvering stuff. You can pick up another rank of performance. Uh, let's see. I think you can pick up performance at almost... Yeah, basically, at theoretically, every rank you can pick up performance. That's your core social skill here. Uh, you're pretending to be an actor. Probably. Um, or you are literally acting. You are in a cover identity, pretending to be something you're not. Very helpful. So that's up there a lot. You can get armed at this rank. You can get access to Noxious Cloud, which we discussed earlier. That's as early as rank 2. That's a great pickup. Go ahead and pick that one up. You can also get access to Lord Bayushi's Whispers, which is a... I want to say Void Shooting. Let me just double check. Uh, yes, that is, a, that is the Scorpion Special... Uh, founder. Founder ability. Scorpion rank 2. Lord by Yushi's Whispers. Uh, once per game session during a narrative scene or a downtime act as a downtime activity, you can make a Skullduggery TN2 void check to uncover an informant who can give you information about a subject. If you succeed, you reveal one informant who can give you information about a topic of your choice. Uh, if the informant's profile is needed, the GA uses whatever NPC he feels. Uh, and then you can spend a void op to... Uh, give an informant a specific skill with ranks equal to your school rank, and then they can perform checks with that skill to assist you until the end of the scene. So, like, uh, oh, hey, here's a dead body. I want to find out what happened to this dead body. What do I do? Oh, I'm just gonna, you know, and uh, summon up a doctor. Now he's here. He can help me out with some shit. Uh, it's a great ability. Very useful for that scorpion feel. You know, you guys have informants everywhere. Uh, useful to just, when you need to get information... You don't even bother with investigating. Just be like, a summon an informant. Can be quite useful if your GM lets you get away with it. A lot. But it's a downtime, so, you know, you gotta be careful. Uh, but still, that's a good pickup. So at rank 3, you can pick up martial skills again. You can pick up sentiment. There's a couple of times that it that occurs. That's probably not terrible, uh, especially considering shinobi are supposed to be able to spot other shinobi, so understanding human psychology and being able to, like, try and see through lies or detect people's uh, lack of telling you the truth, that kind of stuff, useful. Also, another rank of Skullduggery you want. And performance, like we said. So, uh, this rank you can get a couple of Shuji, which you should probably consider. So the first is... Where is it? Dazzling Performance. So when you perform an Artisan skill, Fire, Games Fire, or Performance Fire, oh, hey, you're good at two of those, uh, you get a new Opportunity Spend. Which basically is the next time you receive glory in this scene. If there is a character of highest status in the scene, increase it one per uh, opportunity spend. So this makes a lot of sense for your cover type characters, but theoretically, I don't know if necessarily you want this. It depends on whether you're playing a role or not, right? Like if you're pretending to do your normal job and you want glory because you want to be known for you're doing that social stuff and not that assassinating people stuff, dazzling performance can surely help. You know, uh, you can totally be like, ooh, I gain extra glory. Uh, if you're trying to fly under the radar and not attract attention to yourself, period, probably not for you. Maybe skip it. <clears throat> the other is you can get early access to bravado, which is a, normally a rank 4 technique, and basically as a scheme action, you can make a games or performance fire check. Again, hey, stuff you're good at. Uh, highest vigilance is what you target. If you succeed, each target behaves as though your glory is 10 higher than its actual value, or uh, plus or minus 10 for each additional bonus success to a maximum glory of 100 or a minimum glory of 0. Uh, if they do anything that will call your glory into... Uh, if you do anything that calls your glory into question, the target resists with sentiment to determine your actual glory attribute. Persist until the end of the scene, and if you spend a fire opportunity, you can choose another character in the scene and uh, learn if their glory is higher or lower than yours, the actual value. This is a good pickup because you're going to want these kinds of techniques because you can be like, Hey, I'm confident. I'm more famous than you think I am. I'm pretty well known. I'm respectable. People know about me. They trust me. And other people are like, I don't, I don't recognize that guy, but he says he's cool. So this is going to be very important, uh, possibly more so than dazzling performance, because it doesn't actually affect your glory. It instead lets you manipulate your glory. You can appear less glorious, less famous, uh, 
if you need to, or you can appear more glorious, more famous if you need to. It helps with a lot of social engineering stuff and is pretty critical to the type of historical ninja stuff that actually happened where, you know, a shinobi was not a black pajama guy. That was a, that's basically a meta joke in certain types of Japanese plays because stagehands are also dressed in all black. Um, not, not that I'm saying like dressing in a, like a black cloak in a certain situation isn't stealthy, but you wouldn't necessarily run around like that. Uh, but no, most shinobi hit is like gardeners and stuff and stab you with gardening tools while you were distracted, you know, deep cover shit. So bravado helps with that. Very big get. At rank four, sentiment comes up again. Uh, you can get an opportunity for social skills so you could take a performance or you could up games in your curriculum if you're getting that way. You can take a martial arts melee, and you can take a skill degree. Uh, here's where you can pick up Silencing Stroke. That's obviously a really good one to get. It's at its rank at 4, and pretty helpful to you. Uh, and you can also, uh, in curriculum, if because you want to advance that, you can get a Samurai's Fate, uh, which is a rank for Void Shuji, so obviously, as always, up your, your Void. You make a, a TN5 Command check. You may not be good at that. Uh, targeting enemy of characters or your cohort, and basically in a skirmish, each target ignores critical strikes until the end of the scene. If you succeed during a mass battle, you get a fearless army. I, I gotta be honest, I'm kind of, I find this one kind of unusual. I'm guessing you can target yourself in a skirmish, uh, because it says characters and doesn't exclude you. But otherwise, yeah, this does not scream Shasura to me. I would definitely give it a pass unless you're like. Well, shoot, I really want that XP to count towards my curriculum. Uh, because it's... You can use it, like I said, to basically make yourself ignore uh, critical strikes and any allies you're with, but it doesn't necessarily flow. And sure, maybe you're pretending to be like a, a helpful, you know, the equivalent of a bard. Not an Akuma bard, but like the traditional D&D of a bard, where you're like out there yelling at people in combat, feel better, it's not as bad as you think, you're cool. Or that would actually be a... a, a what is it, a, a, a 40 uh, warlord who was a martial healer who could just yell you better. Uh, but yeah, so, eh. Anyway, like I said, it's an option. And then you get your rank 5, you can pick up martial skills again. You can get courtesy and performance and skill doggery, your old standbys. Uh, and you can get a couple of other shujis. So, for fires, well actually I'm at, at water, so we'll talk about the water one first. Boy on arrival, rank 5. As a scheme action, you can make a courtesy water check targeting... Up to a number of characters equal to your water ring. The TN is equal to the vigilance of the character with the highest status among your targets. That's important. If you succeed, you don't need to uh, forfeit honor or glory for interrupting, suddenly departing, or preempting someone else, regardless of respective status of the participants. You can just fucking bounce. Uh, it It's a shame that, like, for instance, you get a Samurai's Fate at rank 4 and not this as an early access, because, goddamn, this is great. This is a great technique to have. You can just be like, I'm out. Laters. Just, woo. Uh, so yeah, you can be in a scene, you can be out of a scene. Uh, great if you're trying to build alibis, or if you just need to leave a social situation to go put in your pajamas, like we said. Uh, it's a really good for anybody, anybody playing this type of character, period. It's great, and for a Shosuro, it makes lots of sense. The other one is Sear the Wound. That's a rank 5 fire. Whenever you make a social check fire, targeting one or more characters, you get an upper opportunity spend. Uh... You choose an advantage you know, and a uh, disadvantage, sorry, that you know about one of your targets per op spent. Uh, that disadvantage applies to all the target checks until the end of the scene. Which is basically like, hey, I know that uh, you're a drug addict, you're an opium addict. I'm gonna, you know, use that against you. Can be a little hard to put into combat situations, maybe, with your sneakiness, right? Because it requires a social check, but in lots of other situations, it's gonna be super ideal to debuff your enemies and uh, is very on theme for you, being fire and also being taking advantage of stuff. And then at rank 6 you get your mastery ability, which is great. It's called the Final Silence. As an attack and movement action you can make a TN martial arts unarmed air check, targeting any number of minion NPCs at range, oh, let's say 0-4. to four. If you succeed during a narrative scene, you silently kill all the targets over the course of a few minutes. If you succeed during a conflict scene, at the end of each of your turns, you may silently kill one of these targets at range 0 to 2, in addition to all your other actions. Yeah, uh, so the mastery ability is literally the inverse ninja law. Uh, lots of minions, no fucking problem. You can just silently take them out completely in a zone. 
um, or in a conflict, it basically be like you mark them all for death, and if you happen to be within range zero to two, you just pop, pop that guy's dead. Watch out. Uh, this is why it's important to keep your uh, martial arts up. But yes, a uh, great move. You will just take out enemies. It's phenomenal. You gotta work a while to get there, obviously, but it's uh, it's it's pretty bullshit, and I love it. So now you can look at the left side of your screen. Let's talk about technique recommendations. So at rank one, you can take a rank one kata. Uh, I had a couple thoughts on this. So number one, you can potentially take a uh, soaring slice. So uh, soaring slice is a thing that I don't think shows up enough, but basically you can throw a ready weapon with a martial arts check, uh, targeting a character at range two to three, and then basically you can do damage to them, and you can increase the range or reduce the TN of your next attack check. It's I got some use, uh, especially if you aren't actually bothering to take ranks in martial arts ranged. It can be a good way to still have ranged attacks, because, hey, uh, you can throw shurikens without having to throw shurikens, basically, is the way I understand it, because you use the normal appropriate skill. I don't know what the version of this is with arrows, because it's not technically a close combat kata, so I don't know. Do you Do you throw arrows at them as opposed to your bow? Because it doesn't make much sense if you throw the bow at them, but whatever. Soaring Slice is definitely on theme for you, and it gives you a little bit of flexibility with some of your attack options. You know, it gives you some ranged options to fire. Uh, another possibility is striking as fire. Uh, more crits are good, so you can, you know, use those opportunities if you're in, like, a power stance of fire to uh, increase the severity they take. It's uh, more useful if you're in a team, obviously, you can also take advantage, but it can be useful for you, too, because you get to use it in the future. And if you are actually going to go down the range route, you can't go wrong with Hawk's Precision. That lets you blowgun people farther. That lets you throw shuriken farther. Shoot a bow farther if that's your style. You do get a bow. That sort of stuff. So you'll notice there are a couple of things that are not on here that could be. Um, so yeah, there's no striking as air. So while with some, some time to take some analysis of it, I've realized there are a couple of really arrow ed edge cases where you might want to strike as air. Uh, they're really slim, and also they are entirely contingency-based, so I think as part of the Shosuro school, I can't recommend you take striking as air, because no matter how, whether it's you try to apply it the normal way, or you're doing one of these weird edge cases where it actually helps, that means you're delaying, you're, you're pocketing dice for a future turn. You don't want to do that, um, especially if you're fighting. You are probably going to want to be hitting people and hitting them hard and fast so they don't notice anything. You want to be in a situation where that works, and if you're in a situation where you miss an attack, you're probably, you, it's entirely possible that you're narratively fucked, even if you aren't mechanically fucked, so I don't think it's very optimal. And the other thing is, Warrior's Resolve, while good, I would not prioritize for you. You are not, because you don't have the Bushi tag, well, you can certainly murder the shit out of people, and if you wanted to, you could pretend to be a Bushi. Uh, you are not technically expected to go into frontline combat. I... You should not be taking hits as a Shosuro, all right? I mean, your rings are air and fire, so that was a given, but still. You should not be getting hit, and you should not be in a situation where you need to heal. You should just take people out and move on quietly, right? Like, slow and steady wins the race, you know? Don't get into a big brawl and don't get beat up. Uh, now, obviously, you know, there's a little bit of XP gap until you get to rank 2 anyway, and you can always go back and buy earlier techniques at higher ranks, so if you feel like you're in a situation where you need that ability to kind of, you know, boost yourself up and heal some fatigue in a pinch, uh, you can take it later, but it's not a priority that matches your school setup, I think. So at rank 2, uh, you can take rank uh, 1 to 2 Air Shuji. So you've already got from starting, possibly Whispers of Court. If you didn't pick it up, you could pick it up here. But I prefer um, a couple of real Nito Air Shuji, uh, which is either Feigned Opening or Prey on the Weak. So Feigned Opening is a great technique. That's a movement and scheme action. Make a performance air against a check who is observing you. Target's equal to their vigilance. You can only use this during skirmish and mass battles. Uh, the effect is you reduce the TN of attack checks against each target by one until your bonus successes. Uh, you can choose additional targets, or you can uh, make this work better in mass combat. This is basically, you make it look like you've got a, you give a, you show that you've got a weakness, but it's a fake weakness, and that lures the enemy to a false sense of security. You can hit them harder. Uh, a great way to soften the blow for some of your more advanced techniques that are like, you know, TN4 check, TN5 check, shit like that. You know, reduce that down. Very helpful to you, and very on point. I'm just a humble courtier. I'm not a fire at all. Oh, you're dead. 
And then Prey on the Weak, a, uh, a favorite of mine. This is a scheme action. Make a TN1 courtesy air check, targeting a compromised character. If you succeed, the character must pick one of the following. They either have to immediately unmask in a manner uh, of their choosing based on the circumstances, or they forfeit glory equal to your air ring plus bonus successes to leave the scene. So basically, you got to get compromised. You, you've got to basically, you know, pick on a soft target and be like, okay, I've got you. You need to either get the fuck out of here or you're going to unmask and embarrass yourself. Uh, and then you can use opportunity to get some other stuff out of this. Like if you spend two air opportunities, if they leave the scene, you know where they're going. And if you spend a single air opportunity, well, air plus, uh, one plus, you can learn their disadvantages. Which, hey, can key into future shoot you we talked about. So both of those are really good for you. You will probably want to pick up both at some point. It's just a matter of what you want to count for your curriculum. Uh, either is helpful. Cadence can be okay if you want, like, you're a spy, it's possible that you need to communicate secret messages openly, but also you're a, a really sneaky motherfucker. Like, you're gonna have lots of ranks of skullduggery. You should probably just be able to, like, sneak around and deliver notes and stuff. Uh, but Cadence can be a good, good thing to pick up later. Or earlier. Who knows? So, uh, at rank 3, you get rank 1 to 3 Kata. Now, here's a big one. Uh, I've picked three out here that I think uh, makes sense. Number one, Heart Piercing Strike. You have a ability which increases damage and deadliness. Um, if you can just uh, basically, like, explode on a guy. Keeping in mind, by the way, Heart Piercing is not necessarily um, melee. It also includes ranged and unarmed. But you uh, do a critical strike of severity equal to wed uh, deadliness plus bonus successes. If you're poisoned, hey, that means you do plus four. So, yeah, that's that's great for you because you want to be able to drop those bombs. At this point, you're talking about, um, you know, you increase your deadliness by three because you're rank three. That's just a huge deal. It's s so much uh, power and opportunity for you, right? Like, it just fits into your thing so well. You can also take, uh, though, if that's not your style, if you don't like that single surgical strike, uh, you could also take Thunderclap Strike which is air, that's melee or unarmed, uh, targeting everybody within that character's range. If you succeed, each target suffers the base damage and must resist with a air check or be knocked back to range bands. Uh, this is great if you're in involved in lots of skirmishes where you have to fight lots of those little minions, right? If you're in a situation where you're like, oh shit, I'm gonna get ganged up on, just be like, Pow! get back, bro. Uh, very ninja -y of you, you know, big long sweeps, throw everybody back around, get some space, very effective. Uh, and also, I considered some of the other rank threes. Uh, Crimson Leaves is not your wheelhouse. That's an earth-based one. But it is very ninja-y. You basically get to disarm people. You do a little bit of damage. Um, you can knock their weapon away or take control of it. Can be very helpful to you in your ninja duties. But I wouldn't prioritize it. Uh, heart piercing and Thunderclap. And again, uh, much like the last two Shuji, you probably want to pick up both. But it's a matter of which one you want first. So, rank 1 to 4, Air Shuji. Now, this is unfortunate because hopefully this will get resolved by future options, and I may, you know, do some follow-ups if there are more of these. But, uh, there's only one rank... F yeah, rank 2, rank 5, rank 1, rank 2, rank 2, rank 1, rank 3, rank 4... Yeah, there's only, um, one rank 4. Now, obviously, this is the one that you really want. Wolf's Proposal... Um, is you appear honorable. It's basically like the bravado we discussed before, but for honor and it's air. Um, you totally want that because you're a, a shinobi. You start with shitty honor. You're probably going to lose honor over time for doing shitty things. Hopefully, like, it'll go back to you because you're sacrificing and other stuff, and you're probably playing a scorpion if you're in this school. If you're not a scorpion and you're a social infiltrator, I have lots of questions. But yeah, no, you're going to want to be able to go, I'm super honorable. Or alternatively, hey, if you're shitty at your job, you want to be able to go to your boss and be like, what is honor? I don't know. I'll kill who you tell me to kill. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, Wolf's Proposal is just great for you. But it's funny because there are, like, not a lot of other options. I don't necessarily think you'd pick Artisan's Appraisal. Like, you can uh, learn stuff about people by studying their art, but that's not super important. Um... The Wind Blows Both Ways is a rank 3, but that, that's about increasing other people's glory uh, or uh, making them forfeit more glory. You can kind of like Wombo Combo that with uh, with Prey on the Weak, but 
uh, I don't I don't know if it's necessarily a high priority, right? Wolf proposal totally is. It's like it's one hundred percent what I take the less in that slot. If I really wanted to win, wind blows both ways. I could have taken it earlier. Uh, rank one to five kata is your your final group. So this one's a little bit different. Um, depending on whether or not you picked it up, because you know, there's always the possibility that if these are lower ranked, you pick these up earlier, but they may not have been priority, so they're a good time to go back. Uh, the only actual rank five I might recommend for the moment, anyway, is striking as void, because uh, the the what you want to call it the action economy there is really great you can immediately switch to a different stance so you can do something in void that requires void and then be like whoop i'm in air now or whoop i'm in fire now uh or if you fail you can form another action which gives you some flexibility in your options um but obviously if you want something to count uh i would recommend uh breath of the wind style like honestly thinking about it Breath of the Wind is probably something you should have picked up last rank earlier because you could, because it's so good. Uh, when you make a melee check in air, you can spend opportunity in a new way. Uh, the target must uh, do the thing or do a check or become disoriented, which keys in immediately into Veiled Menace. You know, it's a, it's a great setup strike. But maybe you didn't pick it up yet. That's what you want out of here. Um, after that, Disappearing World is the other idea at rank 4 because that's a fire check that lets you daze them. That doesn't necessarily help you out directly, but it's cool and thematic, and it uses one of your big rings. So uh, if you don't pick it up, that's a great way to get your EXP to count on this rank of your curriculum. And that's a general rundown of techniques and builds. So you'll notice, like I said, this is a very focused school. There aren't a lot of... I mean, you have a lot of decent skill groups. You could choose to branch out, but you're primarily going to want to be... well. I'll phrase it this way. So you get a lot of opportunity to take performance. Performance is a social skill that also does specifically work with some of the shuji that's in your curriculum. So that's a good one to take because that makes sense for your character to be doing performance checks and helps fuel some of your social options. You can also pick up courtesy a couple of places. Courtesy is another big one. You'll have some of that to start with. It makes sense to fuel social checks. Uh, if you so choose, you can you could emphasize games as your social skill instead. There's not really anything wrong for that because... A lot of the abilities with Shuji you can do either key off games specifically or key off uh, social skills in general. So they work. You are going to want to take Skullduggery because you're sneaky, and then martial the martial arts is basically, okay, Unarmed fuels your mastery ability and probably some other stuff. Melee fuels your stabbing people. You might want to take ranks so you can throw, throw shurikens or shoot bows better. You know, you get a couple ranks of sentiment. That's key to some other stuff, and also it's uh, just a good skill to have in general to reinforce so you probably may have picked up some rank a rank or two of sentiment before just now it counts for your curriculum you know so your your focus is you want a, a social skill or multiple social skills maybe depending on how how much you want to diversify which you use as basically cover you weasel into situations you ferret out people's disadvantages you make them forfeit glory you can move maneuver them around hey guess what if a guy who's compromised has to leave a scene and he goes away you, and then, like, for instance, if you have to rank 5 to do this, but you can then buoyant arrival yourself out of the scene and go assassinate him, right? Like, there's a lot of combos like that that work. So, in general, you are going to want to appear like something you are not. You are going to want to influence crowds in a social sense. And then, when you get to actually fighting people, you are going to want to kick the shit out of them with big crits. Um, you know, uh, striking as fire can enhance crits. Soaring slice can let you attack people at unexpected angles. Uh, heart piercing strike lets you drop a crit. You know, lots. A lot of my recommendations are basically crit focused or sneaky pants focused. So that's basically what you do. Your school does technically have two specializations, but ideally you are doing both of them, right? You are both buying up social skills, shuji, and setting those up. You know, making sure you've got your rings and the social a a avenues you want. And you're also training up your murder machine skills so that when the balloon goes up and, you know, you get you get that little origami crane that you unfold. Or, I don't know, can you make an origami scorpion? Somebody's probably made an origami scorpion. Anyway, you get the little origami message, you unfold it, and it's uh, a poem which secretly tells you to assassinate Akoda What's-His-Face at midnight. Uh, you can actually go go and take care of that and also take care of anybody standing within, you know, 50 feet of him. So, yeah. Uh, you you have options technically, but I would say that the school's really about being able to do both of these things. Being able to switch from, 
I'm a humble courtier. I'm not even a scorpion. I'm pretending to be somebody else. To, uh, hey, I, uh, I stabbed you, and you're dead. And nobody heard it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, family and clan options and stuff. These will be much shorter. So, scorpion clan. Obviously, as usual, you can pick other clans. Theoretically, you know, the shinobi schools are kind of awkward. I don't really think there's a lot of call for a character to be trained in them if they're in another clan unless like you're in some kind of weird exchange program hostage marriage shenanigans where like oh I was trained as a Shosero infiltrator but I also immediately married into the dragon and so I'm more dragon than scorpion -y. yeah I don't know that doesn't really make sense to me for a lot of a lot of these secrety type schools but hey who knows you know you can you, you might be able to come up with something cool I don't want to necessarily limit your creativity but Seems weird. Anyway, in addition to obviously being the most likely clan for a Shosaro infiltrator to be from Scorpion, also, hey, guess what? Has a really great synergy. The ring you get is air. The skill you get is Skullduggery, because all Scorpions are shifty. And you start with status 35. You know, you're a core... Uh, you're a core clan family. You're one of those hands. The third hand. Wibbling around the, the Emperor. And your family choices are Bayushi, Shosuro, Soshi, and Yogo. Uh, there's not really much else to go out here, other than that also, obviously, the Scorpion Clan's views on Bushido mesh really well with the Shosuro, because honor and righteousness down, you know, duty and loyalty up, makes perfect sense for you. Works out really well. Not much else to talk about. Let's go ahead and move it on. Mostly because I'm tired of looking at that really pretty scrap Scorpion graphic I found. So, assuming, obviously, that you are, in fact, a Scorpion, your family choices. So, there's a couple of these that work out really well, and some of them that can still be interesting. Uh, you're going to see a little bit of a split here. So, Bayushi, to start with, you can pick either air or fire. Mm -hmm. Those are your core rings. Uh, the skills you get are courtesy and design, so you accessorize in your spare time. If your glory is 44, you've got the most starting wealth. Uh, Bayushi works perfectly for this. We have precedent for this. Uh, it's apparently pretty typical for younger siblings of the Bayushi clan champions family to train as Shosaro infiltrators like Bayushi... Um, uh, uh, uh. Sorry, I don't like him, so I ignored how his name's actually spelled. I don't know where the R's and M's are. Uh, but yeah, so there, there's famous characters for that, and that could be pretty simple if you were actually playing a sneaky one, because interestingly enough, the actual uh, starting school, the Bayushi Manipulator, uh, is just a courtier. Like, you, you've got some other stuff in there, but you're you're not technically classed as a shinobi. You're just a perfectly normal scorpion courtier. So, obviously, you know, Shosuro family makes sense, too. You get air or water. That can be good to kind of broaden out your ring possibilities uh, or shore up some of your derived stats if you want to pick water, or you can just go all in and be air three. You know, be it diversified or not, uh, the skills you get are courtesy also, but you also get performance, so you can, you know, really double up in there, get up in there, get that performance to three or two at least. Get a decent rank of courtesy in there. Your glory is a little bit lower, though. So the Soshi family, you get Air or Void, uh, both of which are relevant to you. You get Design and Theology as a skill, uh, an interesting concept. Theology doesn't really have any use to a Shosuro, but a uh, Shosuro Infiltrator, I should say, because you're, you'd be playing something from the Soshi family in this case, obviously, duh. But, you know, you got the design like the Bayushi. You could probably work it in. Maybe you're you're trying to pretend to be like a court scholarly type. I know we had that discussion earlier where technically the book says that those are Shugenjas, but also Asako lore masters are a thing, so you know. Whatever. Maybe you're a tutor or something or that's your cover. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, same glory and starting wealth. Yogo, Earth or Void. They're a weird one, so Void becomes relevant to you in a couple of things later, but not, not immediately relevant, as with many schools. Uh, and Earth is kind of really off your radar. Not that you don't have to take it, but you know, there's that. Your skills are composition and theology, so you do get an, an entirely different artisan skill. But, hey, I mean, that's not terrible. And the theology thing, again, your glory's a little lower. The yoga mostly keep themselves to themselves, and they don't have a lot of money. Like, I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way. Like, I think it would be more fun if uh, you played a yoga of a bushi school. And nobody wanted me to the uh, Scorpion got no bushi. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, like, I feel like that would be more being a standout from your family, but uh, you could play an infiltrator. It's just, I don't, like I said, I don't think personally there's as much synergy there, and 
I don't necessarily know if it gives you anything interesting to step off of for, like, this is how my character is weirdly different from my family or weirdly alike, you know? Like, like I said, the Bayushi uh, rings and skill choices, or ring choices and skill gifts, because that's how they work, uh, are perfectly in line for this character. They work out great. You know, the Shosuro one obviously meshes well. So she can even mesh a little bit well. They got rings, and but the skills are the skills are a little less on point. Uh, Yogo is, is even a little bit more further afield, though maybe you might think uh, composition is more useful than design. I don't know. I think that uh, design works great for a, a shinobi type because that's how you would make your cool masks as your disguise and, you know, picking costuming and stuff like that. But yeah, those are your families. And yeah, that's basically the end. We talked about the the schools and stuff. We talked about some of their some of the different options, some of the synergies you can get. There wasn't really anything necessarily really neat out of the family and, and, and clan synergies to talk about. Just that, hey, guess what? There's some synergy there. Uh, so hopefully we'll work on some more stuff. And yes, as the ending slide says, Courts of Stone is soon. Um, I've received word that people with pre-orders are receiving coming, you know, shipping now notices. And uh, though there was an error on the article that originally reported uh, quarter three, it's been fixed to quarter two. So sounds like next couple of weeks for the physical, and then we can get some early stuff, and then I have to wait for the PDF for like another two weeks. Uh, but they revealed a preview article. It's got Bayushi Bushi in it, even. That's right, Bayushi Death Dealers, because they're Bayushi. Welcome to Scorpion. People will will claim that FFG doesn't understand the Scorpion clan, but from what I've met of some Scorp fans, they uh they uh they know their audience. Just admit it to yourself. Um, and they're interesting because they're actually almost surely because they explicitly said that they're a Bushi school. They're also probably going to be tagged Shinobi because they have access to a couple of ninjutsu, and it's all new stuff. So that's pretty interesting. We'll have to see how they shake out. They've name dropped like four ninjutsu techniques, but also I'm pretty sure since they are advertising ninjutsu so much and like Shinobi integration, it will also probably be like Maho. So you're probably looking at like, I want to say, you know, around 10 to 12 new ninjutsu, maybe, of various ranks, and obviously, hopefully, there'll be rank 5s. Hey, so Koan School can finally use that uh, curriculum bonus to actually buy something that matters. But um uh Honestly, that kind of stuff, like, the fact that Koan had that rank 1 to 5, like, ages ago, makes me think that a lot of this was integrated, so they knew that they were going to be spending more page space on ninjutsu pretty quick, and obviously, uh, as we discussed, I was, I was kind of surprised when I was like, oh yeah, Soshi also get literally all the core book ninjutsu techniques, so... Hey, guess what? Um, Bayushi Bushi, other than maybe if their school ability was really unique, which obviously we should hope for anyway, but um, guess what? If they got core book ninjutsu, they would have been exactly like... They would have been exactly like Shosuro and Soshi in their ninja E parts, and their stability parts probably wouldn't have been too different either, because as we have just covered, the Shosuro school is a great killing machine, right? Their uh, school ability is combat-related. They can access, in curriculum anyway... Because, like, obviously, you can take techniques from anywhere, but a lot of the point of this discussion is to be like, here are the techniques that fit well into your school, and so make sense for you, A, as you rank up, and B, make sense for your school to teach you. So, uh, Shosuro are really good at, at high-level murder techniques. We will see what happens. Uh, they said that they train a little Iaijutsu, so maybe they'll get a little focus on that. Maybe they can get a better opportunity to uh, drop the Wombo Combo like Veiled Menace on them without needing the Skulk requirement. Who knows? We'll see. We'll all see. There will also be some interesting stuff, and I'm betting there will be other Bushi Shinobi schools in there. And like I said, I think our scenario ninja is pure Shinobi tag. Uh, but we'll see. I'm also hoping for social stuff, too. Uh, when that book actually comes out in PDF format and I've bought it, I will be sure to uh, run it down like I did Courts of Stone, and all that, uh, not Courts of Stone, like Shadowlands, and talk about all the components and stuff, and let you know what I think is cool. If there's anything that's not cool in there, it's FFG, though. I'm sure a lot of it will be cool. Just some of it might not be edited perfectly. Seriously, guys. I know you're busy, but a, a, a little bit, a little bit of tender love and care, a little bit of TLC on some of those editing and double checking your formatting. Technically, I think Ninjutsu doesn't say in core book doesn't say that you have to have the Ninjutsu as a permission to buy it, which is weird. That might get some people thinking it's like Maho when it's really not, because Ninjutsu is super secret, dudes. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. So for next school, I think I said I wanted to do a pure uh, courtier. But I don't necessarily know if I want to double up on clans yet. Like, there's a lot of other ones that I'd love to talk about. Like, um, I would love to maybe take a crack at one of the Yogo schools, because they're kind of weird. Honestly, there's a lot of Shugenja schools. Like, almost all the Shugenja schools are kind of unique in their own way, so I'm not sure what I want to do about that. Uh, to talk about them. 
and I don't necessarily want to leave the core book yet. So I don't I don't know. I don't know necessarily how I'm going to handle the Shugenji angle. Maybe I'll, if I give it a couple of weeks. And let me guys know in the comments how you feel if I you're opposed to me doubling back to Phoenix to get Asawa out of the way because they are a really good default one. Or if I should do kind of like I suggested another one and like take a crack at uh, Yuchi. But uh, I think if I want to talk about Courtiers, Courtiers, I'm going to talk about the Akoma Bard because, uh, one, they have a school ability that people think is, is really good. So that's part of the motivation why I talk about this stuff. People think they're a really good school. Uh, and Enter the Dojo is primarily predicated on two things. Either I want to talk about schools that people say are really good and kind of unpack why people think that, or I want to talk about schools that I personally think are cool and maybe are not necessarily understood or appreciated. Um, obviously, if I do this enough and I keep getting views and I don't like have other workload that distracts this from me, which if you want to make sure that I don't have to get distracted by other stuff, make sure to watch this video lots and share it to all your friends. You know, build... Not that we're view whores or anything on this channel, but, you know, if we actually understand that there's an audience and they're engaged, that keeps the channel motivated to keep turning out these videos. But I would probably eventually get through every school, but for the foreseeable future, it's mostly the ones that are interesting. So's. Uh, Ekoma Bard's probably next. We'll see. If maybe I'll I'll get it, because, like, the, the Kaito decision was, was kind of like, I kind of want to talk about invocations, but I also really like Kaito, and I have to talk about monks at some point, and just, fuck it, I'll talk about the Kaito school, because that lets me talk about invocation rules and talk about monks and talk about other cool stuff because I really fucking love the Kaito. They're a great school. That's Archery is a big deal for me. I've been playing Horizon Zero Dawn since it's been on sale and just I'm like, it has a bow. I'm sold. I shoot stuff with arrows. It's really cool. So yeah, there's that. Uh, actually, you know, Bayushi Bushi, the Death Dealers are supposed to get a little bit of range training with the bow too. So maybe that'll be something that they also have unique up on the Shostro Infiltrator. As always, we shall see. Stay tuned to more stuff. Um... Let's see, what clans haven't I done? This is this is Scorp, so we started with Crane, we did Dragon, we did Phoenix, we did Crab. This is Scorpion, so that's five. So I think that just leaves Lion and Unicorn out of the core ones. And yes, I'm sure I'll talk about minor clan stuff. Maybe I'll talk about... Ma Maybe after I've done all the great clans, I'll talk about Mantis. Uh, some of the restrictions on their uh, Shu Genja school are actually kind of interesting, thematic. So maybe we can pop in there. Let me know. But obviously, I don't. I don't have a lot of personal baggage from the old timeline, so I'm not like, "Woo, mantis, mantis all the time." They're gonna be a great clan again. I don't know if they're gonna be a great clan again, guys. I honestly don't. Uh, but yeah. So probably the next two will be at least in those clans, and we'll see what they do. For the sake of roundness, like I said, I might just do Iichi to uh talk about Shukenja stuff. Uh, after that, I will either hit up more core book schools I want to talk about because there's a couple of them, like I mentioned. You know, I do want to talk about Asawa at some point. I probably want to talk about Asahina because that's something that people have thoughts and feelings about, their school ability. Um, let's see, are there any other core type schools I want to talk about? Like, if I want to talk about if I want to talk about courtier courtiers, I also really should look at Doji Diplomat because they are like one of the archetypes. So that could be fun. Uh, talking about either of the merchanty type schools could be cool. Basically, listen, if you guys have any preferences on what schools you want me to talk about, leave them in the comments and I'll see what pops to me. Uh, but the tentative schedule is Ikoma Iuji. Because I want to I want to talk about a, a mainline Shugenja school, and also I want to talk about Unicorn and kind of how they work out. And then after that, we'll start doubling up on clans and school types, I guess. All right. Coolio. Because, uh, like, another thing is, like, if I want to talk about more Lion, Akoto Command is really interesting because they are mass combat focused, you know, stuff like that. Matsu could be interesting to talk about. I'll get there. So, uh, if you like this episode, give it a like. You know, keeps the numbers up, lets us know you're interested and you're engaged. Uh, if you have any comments, besides obviously me asking for uh, other feedback about what schools you'd want to hear about and what I want to analysis on, even if you don't necessarily agree with me, you know, I hope I do a decent job unpacking a lot of your options and stuff. So, leave those in the comment section down below. That's a big thunder crash. Did that get. Yeah, I think that got caught on mic. It's storming a little bit. So, I'm, I'm, it's good I'm, I'm wrapping up, even if I got a battery backup. And uh, so, subscribe if you haven't already for later videos, obviously. I'm kind of invested in these. I'll be doing Enter the Dojo pretty regularly and also doing reviews on novellas, the source books. If I ever actually find time to play the Living Card game, I might talk about that. Otherwise, it's just like, ooh, these art's pretty and I love these plot elements. But I don't really understand the game yet because I don't have time for that. And uh, considering the bell for notifications too because you never know when we'll post something new. Like, this is, 
our schedule's not super locked in. It depends on a lot what else is going on in, in the week and stuff. And, of course, like it says at the front of the show, because there's a Patreon, you can access the episodes early. Uh, obviously, because this is longer and almost like a one-man podcast, it's available in audio format, too, for as little as a dollar a month. Stuff I'm sure you guys would be glad to have if you prefer a, a comfortable listen without visual aids. And, uh, yeah, that's about everything. Uh, so I'll see you guys in the next video. And, you know, uh, just uh, everybody make sure to, to dry clean your black pajamas.